Oh, hi. Didn't see you there. My name is Joseph, and I'll be your narrator for today. This is the story of two girls that were separated at birth who get thrown into very similar situations. The first girl is named Pamela, who is servant to a man named Mr. B, who wants to ruin her. The second girl is her sister, Shemela, who is also servant to a man, Squire Booby, who she wishes to ensnare in marriage. Unlike Pamela, Shemela's end goal is not love, it is money, and she devises a dastardly plan to get to it. While Mr. B acts aggressively and flirtatiously towards Pamela, she tries her hardest to fight him off and preserve her body and good moral standing, but he just keeps coming back for more. She tries dressing in disguise, asking for help, everything, but Mr. B shows that he is too powerful and will not be waved off so easily. Shemla, on the other hand, welcomes Squire Booby's advances, and even though she pretends to fight him off, she does it in a way that she knows he'll stay interested. She dresses up in order to trick him into coming after her, and plots so as hard as Booby tries to stay away, he always must come back for more. Pamela writes to her parents for advice, and they advise her to stay away from this man and to come home immediately. But as hard as Pamela tries, Mr. B finds ways to keep her in his range of power. Shamala writes to her mother for advice as well. Advice on how to seduce the squire while pursuing Parson Williams at the same time. Her mother gives her surprisingly detailed guidance on how to break down these men and to be a proper harlot, plotting so that her and her daughter can profit from this relationship. Pamela is aided by the parson in several ways while she is living in a young girl's nightmare. Although he does have feelings for her, he does not push himself upon her and helps her with no required payment. Shemla also has a parson helping her. She also wants to be in a relationship with him, but can't because he has no money. Little does she know that the parson is only using her to benefit himself and cares very little about what happens to her. Finally, in the end, Pamela is able to change Mr. B and they get married. Of course, this comes up with the standard married couple problems, including a random child popping up. But nonetheless, they lived happily ever after. Shamala also got married. She married her master as well, but continued to play him and use him while she was being played and used by the parson. Her life continues to be a bundle of sin, and no one in that family truly ends up being happy. The end. Well, I hope you enjoyed this book about Pamela and Shamala. It's time for me to go.